Good morning. This is morning prayer for Tuesday, the 25th of August. I'm Andrea Millard. And I'm Jonathan. Good morning. Good morning. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, come, let us adore him. O be joyful, joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates of thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures from generation to generation. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. O come, let us adore him. We'll read Psalm 133. Behold, how good and joyful a thing it is. When brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard. Even Aaron's beard, and went down to the edges of his clothing. Like the dew of Hermon, which falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord promised his blessing. Even life forevermore. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and ever shall be, world without end. end. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, beginning with the 19th chapter, the 38th verse. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So, because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you were reading that, did anything jump out at you? Um, it did, actually. It was that uh, reference to Nicodemus, and it, and it references back to he was the one who came to Jesus at, at night time. And, of course, we may recall that Jesus had indeed come, sorry, Nicodemus had indeed come to Jesus, and they had this conversation about being born again. Mm -hmm. And of course, we don't know in that account quite what happened with Nicodemus, but here we see him again, 
obviously something had really taken root and here he was being faithful coming to uh, bury the body of Jesus and what struck me as I read it today was this sense that Nicodemus was being faithful but he didn't know what we know he didn't know how the story ends anyway that's what struck me how about you Andrea anything well, yeah, a few things struck me. First, you know, here it is. It's during the, um, the, the Passover, this big feast, and everyone's together. And then in the middle of the Passover, there's this trumped up and very quick trial of Jesus. And yet God provides. He provided Joseph of Arimathea, who um, we know um, he provided the space and then yeah he obviously had money he had, he had money. means he had all you know yeah and um, and one of the other accounts say that it was it, the tomb belie- belonged to yeah. him um, and then Nicodemus uh, provides the spices which were really expensive yeah. for the burial yeah. other gospel stories talk about the women coming in and ministering to the body of Jesus and he was a lawyer which is a good thing <laughs> anyway the Lord provides even in the midst of of circumstances that we could have never imagined. Yeah, and so I'm gonna take with me through the day looking for how the Lord is providing for us and for uh, us at Ascension and for his great goodness. We continue in our prayers by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I I believe believe in God, the the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of of heaven and earth. earth. I I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our our Lord, He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the, the life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead Lead us us not into into temptation, temptation, but but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine thine is the kingdom and and the power and and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O Lord, show show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Increase, O God, the spirit of neighborliness among us that in peril we may uphold one another, in suffering tend to one another, and in homelessness, loneliness, or exile befriend one another. Grant us brave and enduring hearts that we may strengthen one another until the disciplines and testings of these days are ended, and you again give peace in our time 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite your um, prayers and thanksgivings. Um, let's pray first for um, those who are closest to us, those in our families. And now widening the circle, we we'll pray for um, those in our church family. And for those in our neighborhoods. And for those in our communities, especially leaders at this time. Lord, we continue to pray for uh, the leaders in our educational establishments, in our um, elementary, uh, secondary schools, and in our colleges and universities, Lord, that you would give wisdom and understanding. We also continue to remember those who work in healthcare and those that are on the front line during this pandemic. Lord, we ask that you would provide them with all the PPE they need and wisdom and grace as they care for those who are ill. And Lord, we do um, remember that you do provide, give us eyes to see today where you are providing for us and how we can be helpful in providing for others. Mm. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you and you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. Yep. God bless you all. Bye.